And good morning, everybody. Had to wait a second there just to make sure this thing was recording. But I just wanted to take a, a few minutes this morning just to talk a little bit about, um, well, not this morning only, but I just want to take some time here coming up to talk about some of my favorite game box games. <coughs> More specifically, like, um, instead of Vassal, I, like, I really like uh, the Sun Tzu game box system. And not that, you know, there's anything wrong with Vassal. I, I like Vassal quite a bit, and I've played a lot of Vassal games. Um, but I like Sun Tzu because I think it has a great graphic system, and it really most resembles the board game that you're playing. And so I want to show you some of my the game boxes I like. And then, not that I have many. Um, I've had game boxes and deleted them over the years. But I have a couple right now that I'm playing through that I wanted to share. And I want to start with Phantom Fury. Now, Phantom Fury, I've never really played before. I actually just picked this game box up. I got the rules and the game box and some player aids. Well, the player aids came with the game box. But if you go to the um, Nuts Publishing, they actually have everything you need to play Phantom Fury. And that's given me the incentive to actually want to go out and like purchase this because it's brilliant. I've seen this before, but I've never really given the game much look through until I got to read through their rules and see the map and, and the tokens and stuff in action. And I just want to say, wow, this is a super brilliant game. And when I play it on Sun Tzu, this totally lacks the programming and the right clicking and stuff that you can do with um, like Vassal to simplify the game. Um, this it, you really have to drag and drop all the pieces and that's kinda why I like it at times it's really just a graphical engine that's it you know you don't if you were to program your own box like I've even made tweaks to different games and I'll show you that here but you know when you talk about Phantom Fury for example and how this works versus with Vassal pretty much this is all drag and drop I mean, you can zoom in on your map and I like the graphical features versus Vassal. Like it's real easy to just zoom in and out. It's very versatile. Drag and drop your map around however you want. Uh, you know, pick up a piece from the stack. Well, carefully get out here because it's a huge stack. You know, grab one item. And when you're putting these things on the map, I mean, it's just like you're just dropping pieces onto your game board. And what's cool is, oops. You know, you, I think what's cool is being able to shuffle pieces. So, like, if I had a stack here of all these soldiers, I can click on this, double-click the stack, and now I can see everything in this stack. It even has the shuffle button. So it's real nice just to say, hey, I need to get a random chit, a chit pull system. Like, this game is perfect for chit pull. Vassal is really good, too. It's just, you know, you got to be able to, understand how to program that stuff and they have great instructions so I totally do not want anyone to think that I dislike Vassal um, it's just that for me Sun Tzu just seems to flow a little bit better so for example here you know just to shuffle pieces or if I want to flip the stack you know because sometimes you have pieces that are you know supposed to not be able to see one side the other side has a you know, like a blank symbol. Like when you talk about Phantom Fury, this isn't really a review about Phantom Fury. This is just talking about some of my cool stuff that I have found with Sun Tzu and kind of how they work. So, for example, uh, when you play Phantom Fury, and let's go look at the counter sheet here, you have, is it these? Which ones is it? Uh, maybe it's like these here. The markers that tell you if, you know, like, potentially what people are in um, a location and what you're supposed to do prior to setting the game up I actually got a game saved where I've got my all my piles of, of markers so you just drag it over to a stack like this and you have it here on this random side but what you do is if you flip the stack and then open it up I can now do just a, a random shuffle and pull the top chit and that's what it's supposed to be you know and it works really good when you play conflict of heroes and you have your damage markers you can just put all the damage markers face down hit the shuffle button real quick and then you hit the top one and to me it's just it's just graphically pleasing I mean I'm not gonna say 
Vassal does it better than Sun Tzu does it better. It's just for me, it's just kind of graphically pleasing to see those chits actually shuffle up and then you pick the top one and, and it is, it's all randomized. Um, the only problem is because of that, Sun Tzu modules can take longer to set up. Like you actually have to drag every single one of these uh, potential encounter markers into one stack and then drag it over onto your map somewhere so that when you need those pieces, you know, they're available. So every time I, I you know, would unlock one of these zones to see who's there, you know, I'm going to have to, you know, find that big stack. So it does take a little bit of step. So what I did for Sun Tzu was I actually have a uh, game board saved as a, a save game where it has all the markers pulled off to the side so that when I start, I don't have to recreate all those stacks every single time because when you get the base game pretty much all it comes with is some of the uh, marines on this front so that you can start getting your random determination of which ones go onto the starting zones and which ones go into your company and battalion reserves so they've got those here um, but what my save game has it off to the side and all the potential contacts and all the um, you know who controls what zones like all of that is already pulled out and set up now on the basic uh, module here for for Sun Tzu um, they do have some markers in place already like your air support and they have these cool little trackers so you can track how often you can use your support and they also put in place a turn tracker and then one for victory points um, the only thing I changed when I play is I did change out, let's find it here, where is it? Like I used the turn marker to actually track turns because I thought it looked cooler than the uh, whatever this little circle thing is. Let's get rid of that. So that's probably about the only biggest change. So I like Sun Tzu because it is easy to drag the map around. And it's real easy to zoom in. You just hold down the right mouse button and move the mouse up or down. And you can zoom. So it's real easy to kind of navigate around and find the information that you want. And there you go. And this is actually a pretty darn big map. So sometimes it is kind of a pain. You have to really zoom out sometimes to find the stack of stuff that you want. Get the item you need and then drag the mouse over and hopefully get it where you want. One thing I have found though to do is instead of zooming all the way out sometimes what you can do is actually um, well it doesn't work so good when you have a whole stack but sometimes I need just one particular marker somewhere like when I go to do my tank placement what you can do is if you double click it it'll pull it up in this uh, box that shows your stack and then when I decide I want to put it in, this is probably a poor example, but just once I have A or the stack that I want selected, I can just click on the map so I can like kind of come over here, zoom in where I want it, and then just single click once and it will drop it in. So I don't have to worry about being zoomed out and place the marker here, move the map, drag it over. So there's little things you can do to kind of help put your pieces where you want them to be. Yeah, I'll just stick that back there. So, again, it's actually, I, I like Sun Tzu, it's easy. Um, you can add in player aids, so you've got all the different tables and charts here already. The counter sheets, and uh, when you program your box, it's real cool that you can flip the counters. You know, you just double click right, right double click, and you can flip the counter sheet and see the front and the back. Um, here's the, the different markers everything's just down here where you need it so you have access to your counter sheets probably one thing that I would have done differently if I programmed the box is I would have put all these markers on one tab that way I could just go to the marker tab here or to the counters and then all the different counters that I could possibly want to use would be on one page just so you don't have to flip through and and guess what you're grabbing so that's just the basic there of Sun Tzu and the module is really cool so no I I know they don't have a Vassal module specifically for uh, Phantom Fury, so it was really nice that somebody did come up with a Sun Tzu module. It's just that I know from experience that there's no programming, so you can't like um, 
you know, I know sometimes in Vassal, if you had a counter out here on the map, and if you just right click the counter, and you get a whole bunch of options that you can do. Like if you pin a unit, you could right click it, choose pin, and depending on your game, it would automatically put a pin marker. And what is so cool is like if you play Band of Brothers, Screaming Eagles, something like that, whoever programs the module you can actually change the size of the the chits and the markers so if I had a unit and I right clicked it and I said you know make the unit pinned then it would put a custom sized marker onto that unit showing that it's been pinned or suppressed and that's cool with Sun Tzu yeah you can make your markers whatever size you want but you can't right click the unit and say pinned I would actually have to go find the pin marker come back to my map and then drop the marker you know and now depending on how you've got this stuff sized up you, you know you can't custom place that on the marker when you right click I mean it's, so there's th advantages disadvantages to me Sun Tzu feels the most like the actual board game and then Vassal does make the games easier to play because it automates a lot of stuff so it kinda really depends on what you're looking for um, but I'm real happy with Sun Tzu just for that board game feeling and uh, just because I think it's real slick how you move around. Mostly I play it because it's easy to program. Even I can program it. And let me show you what I came up with. I don't know if this will overwrite. But here's what I did. On the Board Game Geek, when they were talking, uh, if you go look at Phantom Fury, there was a forum entry where it said uh, if you have mods that you want to add for the game you know just contact them let them know what you're doing and so this was done by um, like in board game geek his name was like Kozure I should have done better writing his name down to give him credit but it's out on the board game geek and he does fantastic graphics and you go look at the stuff that he has and uh, you know he does great counter work art just uh, amazing stuff so if you go and look at Phantom Fury on the Board Game Geek you will find a link to his stuff and his mod is called Strike of the Sword and this takes um, the game Phantom Fury out of Fallujah in Iraq and now has ported it over to Afghanistan and this is a map he came up with and this actually fits the Phantom Fury game really really well so again without doing a review of the game you can go find Marco he has a really good review of the game but what uh, what Kozure did was just took that basic system and then tailored it for Afghanistan so instead of just being all buildings he now has open fields um, there's ditches and just things that really make you feel like you're playing you know an Afghanistan scenario and what's cool too is he actually has rules and charts and stuff and so he made this awesome map well the idea was you print the map out and you can play with your physical game box well since I'm trying this out with Sun Tzu um, I was actually able to import the map with just a minimal of programming I now have a strike of the sword module uh, based on Phantom Fury now I haven't got this set up yet with all the pieces and I had to resize the map so now when I bring a counter over, let's say I got a marine unit, and they're going to play down in here, um, you know, they fit pretty good. When I did this originally, it was the map that he made is so big, when I, trans, you know, kind of brought it into the game, I could fit like four, four unit pieces into one of these locations. So I knew that the scale was way, way off. Um, so I just tweaked it a little bit, and now the pieces fit pretty much exactly like they do in the other you know just the regular Phantom Fury mod and then when you add in uh, let's say here some of the oh what some of the other like here this is a fortified zone but when you play stuff the insurgent control it fits in the box real pretty much exactly like it does in the other mod so I tweak the size of the map a little bit and now I can play his strike of the sword mod and I wanted to point this out, you know, I hopefully people who see this will go and check out his mod. I can't share the game box because I don't have permission at all to use this or to, I didn't ask, I just stuck it in the game. So this is just for personal use. Um, but if you go and you check out his work and you get interested in checking out Sun Tzu and you want to try the game out, you know, I could probably share some tips on how I put the map in. 
but really the instructions are right on the Sun Tzu website. You just go look at their uh, how to make a game board. It, it, it's so easy. I mean, if I can figure it out and program it and stick a map in and resize the map, anybody could. So I encourage you to go check a, take a look at Strike of the Sword mod for Phantom Fury. Um, try the Sun Tzu board out. I know that there are some people who don't like Vassal because it seems intimidating, but I know people who like Sun Tzu because that intimidation factor is gone because it, it feels more like a board game. So again, I enjoy both, but if you feel a little intimidated by Vassal or don't like the way it works a little bit, try Sun Tzu out because it's just like the board game. I mean, just pick up a piece and there it is. And I would say the biggest difference between Sun Tzu and Vassal is the fact that Vassal has like play by email capability. And if you do any multiplayer with Sun Tzu, it's pretty much all going to be like a face to face real time. Uh, so that's probably why a lot of people don't play Sun Tzu is because I can't record a move and then send it off to my buddy so he can see what I did. Unless I actually filmed like a YouTube and said, okay, here's my stuff, here's my dice rolls, send it off to my buddy and have them react to it. You know, that might be a little much. So I think that's why a lot of people like Vassal is because that play by email. But if you do have a friend that you can do real time with, you know, or just for single solitaire play, you know, try it out. What's cool is when you play like um, this uh, Strike of the Sword here and you have to make your dice rolls, when you program your board, you can make an infinite amount of dice. And they already come with graphics and stuff. So you, you don't have to worry about finding pictures of 10 sided dice and 6 sided dice and when you double click a dice it throws it out on the table you know so that's kinda cool I actually again that helps me feel like I'm playing the game because I'm throwing my dice down onto the table I get my dice result it saves it up there for me um, so when you play like conflict of heroes or something and you need three dice six four dice six they have them all sitting up here uh, this game fortunately only needs one die ten, so that's what it's got right there. Boom. So uh, I highly recommend that you try Sun Tzu out. See how it works for you. Uh, this game, I don't have it set up, so it's real hard to show you how to actually play a game. And I might do that one time. But I just wanted to share this. So Sun Tzu game board. Here's Strike of the Sword mod for the Phantom Fury game. So if you're familiar with Phantom Fury, go hit the Board Game Geek and check out the Strike of the Sword uh, mod, read the instructions. He put together a lot of good charts and tables, and it plays really, really good in Sun Tzu. So um, I'll just leave it at that. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.